everyone, I'm Sophie Baker, the International News Editor at Pensions and Investments and Director of Programming at the World Pension Summit. And I'm very pleased today to welcome for our expert talk, Banji Fentola, Executive Director of Financial Services at Africa Finance Corporation. Hello, Banji, how are you? Hi, Sophie. My pleasure being Hello. here. Thank you, for, thank you for having me. Absolutely wonderful to see you. And in the run up to the World Pension Summit in The Hague this year, taking place in November. We are very absolutely delighted to welcome you for the expert talk. I have a few questions for you. Um, some things that I'd like to just go through ahead of the conference and to know a little bit more about you, about your role and about African Finance Corporation. How does that sound? Yeah, it sounds exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. Good. Let's go for it. Okay, let's go. So, Badger, given your new role as Executive Board Member and Head of Financial Services, for AFC. Um, I mean, it coincides with the next sort of five year growth strategy, right, of Africa Finance Corporation. So, could you tell us a bit about the corporation's goals for the coming years? Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. So, uh, I think to answer where we're going, it's always good mm -hmm. to trace back where we're coming from. So, in 2018, <clears throat> we actually sat together as a leadership team you know, took stock of the business, took stock of the operating environment and made a conscious decision that um, AFC wanted to be more instrumental in driving, you know, the infrastructure development on the continent and just generally helping Africa to bridge its infrastructure deficit. Um, to do that, at that time, I think uh, our balance sheet size was about four and a half uh, billion dollars. Uh, we decided we wanted to double and become a $10 billion organization in five years. So bear in mind that was 2018 that we made that decision. And of course, in doing that with growth, we're gonna be more impactful. We're gonna do significantly mm -hmm. more in moving the needle on the continent. Um, we achieved that with a year to spare. It was unbelievable. Oh. So <laughs> a, year, a year before our target date, we had met the 10 billion um, mark that we're looking at. As at the end of last year, which was the end of you know the strat that strategic cycle, we were mm -hmm. about twelve and a half billion dollars in terms of balance sheet size. We had invested about thirteen billion dollars across thirty six countries. But more importantly, our influence had grown significantly in terms of membership, new members. Or about forty, forty three or so African countries had joined, and um, several other new shareholders came on board. So where, where are we heading? I mean, we've sat down again, haven't achieved our strategic goals to think about the next five years. And I think over the next five years, you know, we are quite an ambitious organization. We said to ourselves that we would like to see our organization grow to $25 billion. So we're Gosh. moving from $12.5 billion to $25 billion. And to do that, obviously, there's a lot of capital that needs to be raised, a lot of mm -hmm. deployment of that capital on the continent. Even at 25 billion, there's a lot to be done. I mean, the developmental mm -hmm. work on Africa is huge. It's about $170 billion of investment needed annually. So at 25 billion, I think we are still small, but the mm -hmm. amount of influence in catalyzing capital into the continent is more important than the balance sheet size. So I think mm -hmm. that's really where you see more of our influence, you know, helping Africa to get as much capital as possible into the continent. I think that's an important topic that we, we probably need to spend more time talking about. And uh, so I think the strategic direction is is going to be a bigger organization, bigger mm -hmm. influence, and we will be trying to mobilize as much capital as possible to the continent over the next uh, five years. Fantastic. And I love that kind of, you know, those, those big ambitions for very um, sort of real topics and real sort of influence and real outcomes that you're looking at as well and achieving those ambitions too right and obviously wish you all the best with reaching that sort of 25 billion um, I have no doubt that, that it'll happen so I mean alongside all of that obviously there are new investment opportunities um, and it's all about opportunity, right? So are there any that you could talk about um, that you might be looking at or thinking about in order to sort of help achieve Africa's energy transition and move that way? I think a lot. So look, AFC has positioned itself and I think we've earned a reputation over the last uh, decade as 
maybe one of Africa's champions for energy transition. So, you know, we've done a lot. We released the white paper on Africa's path to net zero. So beyond investing, we are also shaping advocacy, you know, and trying mm -hmm. to just essentially be that voice that is advocating for Africa. We're regularly at COP where we are a known voice. So we're always speaking for the continent. And obviously we're working with policymakers as well to ensure that, look, there's a pragmatic approach to energy transition. And that pragmatic approach has to be one that doesn't leave development behind. You know, because mm -hmm. to be honest, you know, Africa itself today contributes very little to climate change. We know that. But we also do know that Africa, unfortunately, is disproportionately affected by the impacts of climate mm -hmm. change. You just need to look at the flood, the droughts and everything across mm -hmm. the continent. And you see that, you know, Africa is affected. So we're not blind to the reality, but we say to the world that Africa is a solution, you know, towards the path to global net zero. Uh, most of the battery minerals that you need for energy transition are in Africa. And we are helping mm -hmm. with that whole process of investing in that value chain. But I think the biggest thing we're doing, you know, as an institution is we came to a quick realization that Africa's problem fundamentally is that, you know, we export all the primary products to the rest of the world, don't add value on the continent, and those things are processed elsewhere and shipped back mm -hmm. to the continent. And yeah. if Ocean Voyage, just Ocean Voyage alone was a country, it probably would be like the sixth or the seventh largest polluter in the world. Wow. So imagine Gosh. things going out of the continent in primary form, coming back in process, back. and going back empty, all that. So what we're mm -hmm. trying to do is a beneficiation strategy. A lot of value has to be added at source. So this primary products are here on the continent. How can we add value? At least step one, step two, step three in the entire value chain should be done here. Not only does that create employment for the locals, not only does it create foreign exchange for the countries that need it so badly, but it mm -hmm. also helps to prevent a lot of ocean voyage and address the issue of climate change. And you know, we've done that successfully. Arise is a good example. So Arise Special Economic Zone was our pilot for this in 2016. I think we invested in that from one country to the Arise has developed special economic zones in about 11 countries or certainly more than 10 countries. In Benin, you know, we use the cotton industry as an example, mm -hmm. where we used, they used to ship cotton out. Today, they actually make fabrics and they've added 40 times value from just cotton Gosh. to clothes that are being sold all over the world including the children's place, you know, mm -hmm. which is a major outlet. In Gabon, we did that with the timber industry. In the past, trees were cut. Today, furnitures are made. And some of those furnitures are sold in Miami. They are sold in other parts of the world. Significant amount of value, over 40,000 jobs created indirectly and directly. So that's the plan for us going forward. You will see more of investments in creating special economic zones, in creating beneficiation on the continent. And lastly, maybe just to address one last point, mm -hmm. a few years ago, we invested in Lekela. I'm sure you probably might have heard about that. So Lekela today makes us the largest owners of renewable energy assets in Africa, with assets in Egypt, assets in Senegal, assets in South Africa, right? We did that in partnership with Mazda, as well as mm -hmm. Infinity Group in Egypt. And, you know, it was 1.3 gigawatts of energy. The plan over time is to more at least at the first instance get that to at least three gigawatts and more investments afterwards so you would see a lot of investments in the renewable space which is solar wind and all that being mm -hmm. led by afc so we're very very intentional we have a bold ambition to be the largest player in the renewable energy space and global energy transition in africa Absolutely fascinating. I hadn't really thought about the interconnectivity as well, that, you know, the local jobs, the local impacts, but also then the exports, the import, all the different parts of it that come together. Um, I heard a lot in there around sort of environmental and also sort of social benefits as well, as well as these investments and what you're looking at. And one of the other things I wanted to ask you is something that sometimes comes up when I talk to institution investors looking at emerging or frontier markets. 
um, on new opportunities around governance, sort of that last part of the EF and the G. So I wanted to ask you, what does AFC consider to be good governance? And how do you go about sort of reassuring investors that might have questions around it or want to ask how to evaluate it or how to how to think about it? Yeah, I think that's a good question. And I guess the answer is, first of all, we need to leave by example. And that's AFC itself being a well-governed institution. And many times we talk about ESG, people focus on the E. You know, mm. sometimes less on the S, but even less so on the G, sadly. So the G happens to, to be that part of ESG that doesn't tend to get the right type of attention, in my opinion. But I think it's, it's very important, right? So even when we're making investments, we obviously spend a lot of time looking at the governance to be sure mm -hmm. that the governance makes sense and all that. For us as an institution, that's important. Even the way we are governed, you know, highly conservative financial metrics you know we have an investment grade rating as you know we're a3 rated by moody's and if you ever read the rating report it's really more around the governance of the institution right. you know conservative financial ratios conservative leverage you know our debt to equity cannot be more than three to one you know capital ratios must be above 30 percent all that stuff all that stuff all works in to give us that strong rating that we have so mm -hmm. governance is important because it kind of de-risk an organization or de-risk a project and the less risky you are the more attractive you are to investors investors mm -hmm. you can attract capital at a lower cost and for us that is extremely important right because investors want to back an entity that they're pretty sure is well governed well run such that you know the company makes the right investment choices and all that and they can give the right returns to the investors so i think for us governance is extremely important um, internally, we are super, super well governed and we like to see that from projects that we back to be sure that, yes, we're making the right investments. The easiest way to lose money is bad governance. So we know that and we, we spend a lot of time evaluating governance in all the projects and, and companies that we back. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Banjee, it's been absolutely fascinating. I can't wait to hear more on the ambitions, the opportunities. Um, and sort of the leading from the front that AFC is doing um, for these opportunities and look forward to seeing you in the hay. But thank you so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed your expert talk. Thank you, Sophie, and uh, wish you, you a great week ahead. Thank you. Absolutely.